Hi there, and welcome to today's episode of Next Wave TV. I'm your host, Tony Rialli. It's been a while since I did an episode of Next Wave TV. I've been pretty busy with my new uh, job that I mentioned in previous episodes. Also, uh, Next Wave Graphics, which is up to date been uh, just a graphic design company, has expanded out into a full service production company, Creative Edge Productions. What does that mean for you guys? Well, that means that I'm going to be doing a lot more commercial broadcast uh, uh, shoots, a lot less uh, independent film shoot, uh, little shorts and stuff like that. Um, but what I will do is I will try and take pictures of every shoot that I do, uh, kind of document the behind the scenes of how I do my shoots, and try and uh, upload them to my blog. And so you can go, go ahead and check those out. My blog is nextwaveg.blogspot.com. Uh, also on there you can check out uh, my Facebook fan page. You can jump on there, become a fan of Creative Edge Productions, and uh, you can get uh, find out more information, post links. Uh, please post on the, on the blog and on the, on the fan page. Uh, that way I can find out what you guys are thinking and uh, just see what uh, what feedback you guys have. Also, I have a, my own website, creativeedgepro.com, uh, so you can go there and check out some of the services I do and just some of the photography. I'm doing photography, graphic design, and video production. So anyways, um, since then, I've upgraded a lot of my gear. About a year ago, I did an episode on how to build your own prosumer rig, and uh, this uh, I built that with the HV20 and the Brevis 35 and a bunch of other stuff, um, and that was a fantastic rig. I really liked it, but I was never quite satisfied for it for doing um, commercial shoots. Uh, there was things in there that I was just never quite happy with. Uh, so since then, I've basically upgraded all my equipment. In today's episode, where I'm going to be talking about upgrading a prosumer rig, so upgrading your equipment. Um, basically, everything on this rig here is completely different. But you can take pieces of this and say, I would, um, you know, the HV20 does have great optics. I'm shooting with an HV20 right now, and uh, sorry about the audio, but my, I'm going to using my good mic here just so you can see it. Uh, but the, uh, the HV20 does produce a great image, but there are certain uh, aspects of it that are limited. So I'm going to talk about why I have a different camera here and just the different aspects. But like I said, you can take pieces of this and apply it to your own rig and decide uh, what would work best for you. Um, so, so I'm going to get started. Um, I'll start off with um, the basic overview of what this rig is. Uh, this is a Canon XHA1 camera. Uh, it is a prosumer camera. Uh, it is, uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, I would advise you to take a look at it because I don't want to get into all the details of it here. But it has a lot of great features that I'm really liking. For instance, it has a lot more manual control than the HV20 did. Um, it has a better uh, image sensor so you're getting better picture quality uh, the it can do better in low light it has XLR inputs so I can plug the mics directly in there instead of using the beach tech adapter which I was using before um, so it's a great really great camera I'm really happy with it um, I have upgraded to the uh, Red Rock M2 depth of field adapter I'm not saying that the Red Rock is any better than the, the Brevis uh, they're both great units uh, just basically when I, I sold my other rig complete and I bought this and I uh, the guy threw in the Red Rock with it and so since then I've upgraded it and I'm really happy with the Red Rock. It's a very good depth of field adapter. Um, I did have some issues with the Brevis uh, before that I haven't had it with the Red Rock. Um, in, in the end I got the Brevis to work but the Red Rock is a, is a really nice depth of field adapter. Um, I did this time get the, the flip module and the flip module because 35 millimeter adapters or 35 millimeter lenses flip the image upside down the way that your eyes do, um, but there's nothing to decode it like your eyes do or your brain does to flip the image right side up. You need a flip module to flip the image right side up. Um, some people don't do this; they just either flip their monitors upside down and then they flip the image in post. Uh, but because I'm doing commercial shoots and I want everything to look professional, uh, and it, it saves me a step of I can just import the footage really quickly. Um, and the, the flip modules usually also help uh, avoid a lot of the chromatic, chromatic aberrations that you get around the edges. You can focus on the image a lot better. Um, so I am happy that I did go with the uh, flip module, even though it was a little more costly. Um, one of the big differences you'll see here is this uh, LCD screen. This is a 11-inch Manhattan LCD, and I love Manhattan LCDs. Um, the previous monitor I had was a Lilliput 619. And it was great. It was a VGA screen. Um, I had to get a, 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 beach, a Marshall Beach Tech, or not Marshall. I had to get a, 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 a VGA to component adapter so that I could say, take the component signal coming out of the HV20 and 
um, convert that into a VGA signal, which is what the Lilliput used. Um, in the end, it, it worked, uh, but it, I was never able to rely on it for colors. Nothing was quite right. I was not really happy with it, and when I went outside, it was almost impossible to see it. The Manhattan LCD that I have right here is, is just fantastic. It's bright. It's very large, obviously, as you can see. It is HD. Um, I highly recommend Manhattan LCDs. Their prices are fantastic, too. You can get uh, monitors under $1,000 that would normally cost two, dollars $3,000 for a name brand um, studio um, field monitor. And the cool thing is this has got a ton of inputs, too. Like, this has got component, composite, as video HDMI. Um, I have a Nikon D90 that I do use sometimes for video shoots, and I, the little 3-inch screen on there is kind of difficult to see for setting your focus. This says HDMI input, and I can plug my, uh, my Nikon D90 into it. So this saves me money because I don't have to have two separate monitors. I could just have the one. Um, so I highly recommend. This is an 11-inch screen. They make, about, I think, 7, 8, maybe 9-inch screens. 11-inch um, is kind of large for most people, so you may not want to get this one. Um, but they are HD. They are really great resolution, nice and bright. Colors are great. I highly recommend. The value is just un unbeatable. Um, I have a Gear Deer mat box now. Um, the Gear Deer, I, I haven't played around with it too much. I like it. It's because it's very light. It's made out of like a uh, almost like a foam board, and it's very uh, very lightweight and easy to use. Um, it looks cool. It's got a lot of components to it, and I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, but like I said, I don't use Matbox. I don't use filters on the Matbox too often. At least right now, I haven't for most of my shoots since they're indoors. Um, but it's it's a great Matbox. It's uh, it's very nice. The rail system I'm using is the Red Rock Rail Support. Um, those are like I've said in previous episodes. That's um, they're about a horse apiece. The Red Rock it makes a great one. I know Cinebate makes a really great one. Zacuto makes really cool. Um, quick release units. Um, Zacuto's are it's going to be a little more expensive, but Zacuto is definitely worth the money that you pay for it because you get a lot of great. It can be a lot quicker to use a Zacuto, and that can save you time and money uh, in a shoot. Uh, the shoulder support that I have is the Micro Shoulder Support by Red Rock, and it is it's fantastic. I really like it.